So right now we're developing the standards uh, for, let's say, the advanced components of a fintech security, like the cryptocurrencies, fiat currencies, stuff like that. So um, we're trying to articulate uh, how to actually protect that from an from an end to end point of view to the right level of assurance. So today it's more of a conversation of, okay, we know how to apply security per se, to what level do we have to apply it? Because more costs money, and so that's a business decision. Well, if you look at how we evolved in security in the advanced, in advanced industrial economies, it's really an evolution that has resulted in multiple frameworks authored by multiple groups, so it's actually a very costly and complex thing to address. So, so, for example, the uh, uh, CEO, the new CEO of Equifax, announced on March 19th that they were investing 1.25 additional billion dollars in security and hiring an additional 1,000 people. Well, there isn't 1,000 people per se to find, and uh, not everyone has a, a, quarter, a one and a quarter billion to throw to security. So, the point being is, security today is protection for the rich. And we're connecting to the rest of the world extremely fast, and they're less protected. So how are they going to be protected so that when they connect to us, we're all protected? So security inclusion now is um, a call to action that in essence, we use an innovation that exists to reduce the amount of humans involved in the particular process which they're not very doing, doing a very good job at, the, the process of security control management. It is not a human conducive uh, activity to track minutia. So the problem is, is there a way that we can convert worded statements into a syntax language that can be understood by computers? In which case, we would solve a large part of the problem and it would reduce cost and complexity of security, which is security inclusion now. So if you look at security controls and security control frameworks that are authored by diverse uh, standards development organizations, they're all in, this, in essence about the same talk, topic, the application of security controls, but they're authored uh, by different organizations in a worded format, so they're different. And they all have to be read, interpreted, validated, verified, and that entire process is called the audit and control industry. You know, controls, what do I have to do, what do I have to do to show that? that that's what makes it so complicated and costly, is the reconciliation between all these frameworks. Uh, and how do you know that one is, is complete versus another? You, there's no way to visualize that. So the objective is to make all security controls independent of who authored them. And, the, and, and so that they can become mass interoperable with no effort. So this requires what I call the Security Genome Project to be uh, initiated, where a bunch of experts would uh, not only define the terms uh, involved in security, but define them in a um, single parent tree structure where uh, you can increase precision as you go down the tree. So, so one, if we adopt a syntax language that allows the worded control to be uh, transformed into a unique and unambiguous statement, then that'll make all controls interoperable, make things crystal clear, and even perhaps machine re readable, which would be a precursor to automation. So if we want to automate security, get humans kind of out of the way because they're too slow, uh, this would be a precursor to, to what would be required in order to enable the automation of of you know, threat detection patterns and, and countermeasures. Okay, so the Unified Security Model is the first in industry model that combines what I call amount of security and quality of security. So I don't use the, the word security very often, it's more protection, am I actually getting protection? And protection is a combination of amount of it, which is tied to money, and quality of it, which is tied to, to, to expertise. So the Unified Security Model is the first model that actually addresses the residual risk remaining after you've provided your protection, all the way down to uh, the controls that are implemented via actual assets delivering that protection. So right now we've got chasms and disconnects between the fiduciary risk management layer and the implementation delivery layer, and the Unified Security Model uh, uh, links those two and eliminates two major friction paths that that the industry has. How do you go from measuring and knowing your actual implemented state of control and articulating how that fulfills a set of objectives 
in this framework versus this framework, which is very difficult to do, and industry spends billions on that process. The USM eliminates that friction path. You can go right from knowledge of actual implemented to instantly knowing how they fulfill controls in many frameworks. So that's security inclusion now, methods where we can dramatically reduce the cost and complexity of delivering security.